how much you owe. Yeah. And written out. Sure. Or physically. Oh, hi. Energy, energy, energy. That creates the lid and, and, and everybody. So if you and I disagree on something, then you must be erased and banished from the board. like 500 like a man. Yeah. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's Sam Speaks and Sam Speaks Radio podcast on iTunes. Today, we are here with Andrew Strickman of Realtor.com. Hello. Hi, Sam. You might know Andrew because he actually created the Elizabeth Banks videos that are on Realtor.com. And today, we're going to learn <coughs> not to connect or how to connect with Elizabeth Banks for your videos, but actually how to get videos, create videos, and make them engaging so you can actually drive business to your website and your social platforms. So first and foremost, let's just start about, you know, how did you get into the real estate business um, and through Realtor.com? Um, good question. Um, completely fell into real estate. Mm -hmm. um, always had an interest in real estate, which I think is probably a good prerequisite. But um, a woman I had worked with at Yahoo moved, came to Realtor.com to head up marketing. She asked me to come along and help start to develop a consumer marketing practice and a brand marketing practice at at Realtor.com, which we really hadn't had before. We were about 16 years into into our business and we'd spent that entire time marketing to the real estate industry mm -hmm. and not marketing to consumers. And so I had a background in consumer marketing. I also have a background in journalism and storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I think both of those um, professional experiences and career paths have contributed to the work that we do at Realtor.com. So it's interesting that you mentioned you have a background in storytelling. Um, you know, someone had constantly tells me and who I work with with marketing how storytelling is so important. How can somebody, obviously not using Elizabeth Banks, but how can somebody create their own video and what story should they tell? Yeah, no, I think that's a, a that's a great question. I think every uh, anyone who is in the business of creating personal connections with their customers, with their clients, and, and building their personal brand needs to be a good storyteller, but you don't all have to be the same kind of storyteller. Right. Um, I think, you know, honestly, everyone has an interesting story to tell. It really matters, though, who you're telling it to. Sure. So I think that realtors who are really interested in, in getting into video marketing have to really think about who they want these videos to reach, who, mm -hmm. they, who they think their customers are, and who they can be authentic with sure. um, and tell those authentic stories, you know, whether it's around personal interests, whether it's around uh, business style, whether it's around professional experience. I think all of those things can contribute to the story that a realtor tells. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, at the, at the end of the day, it's about being authentic, being yourself. Um, but figuring out what those things are uh, within yourself that are different, that mm -hmm. someone might respond to. And, you know, not everybody's going to respond positively, but those who do are going to be more likely to work with you uh, on a transaction if they feel like they have that personal connection to you. Sure. Have you seen any examples of and watched any videos of different agents and, and one maybe stood out? Um, I, I, a lot have stood out. I think um, what's remarkable is that the um, the advent of, of high quality cameras on smartphones right. has really democratized the art of creating video. Right. You don't need a, a video production company. You don't need even a videographer or cameraman. You really can create this stuff yourself. And I think that um, those realtors that we have seen who are doing really effective things, they have very, very defined personalities. Mm -hmm. they, they are the opposite of what I would call a wet noodle. Right. Um, uh, and, and, and they let those personalities come to life in front of the camera. And that in and of itself is not an easy thing. Um, ask anyone to stand in front of a mirror and tell a personal story to themselves in the mirror. And that's a really difficult thing for a lot of people to do. And it's one of the reasons why if I was going to give advice to a realtor about how to get started in this, it's the first thing I would recommend doing. Get in front of a mirror, mm -hmm. tell stories, you know, start talking about yourself, talking about your business, talking about your family, talking about your interests, um, and, and get comfortable with seeing yourself. Right. So that the next time you actually point a camera toward yourself or someone else points a camera to you, um, there's a certain level of comfort you have with seeing that piece of glass in front of your face, mm -hmm. whether it's the tiny lens of a, of a smartphone camera or the big 
lens of a, of a uh, video rig. Sure. Once you have that video done, whether it's an edited video or Facebook Live uh, or anything else, what other, obviously not Facebook Live for this question, but when you have a video, raw or edited, what platforms should you use to really deliver them out? What's the best platform mm -hmm. to really get that engagement? Yeah, I mean, I think that there are um, clearly a lot of social platforms that are, are have become very, very important to video and video marketing. Um, Facebook really being sort of the, the preeminent one because mm -hmm. of its reach, because of the technology that's driving sort of um, video presentation on it. Um, I also think Instagram is very, very special and very unique for a certain kind of video. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to shoot a three-minute video and post it on Instagram. Right. But you might shoot a 10-second or a 15-second quick hit. Hey, I'm at this open house. Take a look at this gorgeous living room with this gorgeous view of downtown San Francisco, whatever it might be. And, and those small, thoughtful bits of content are perfect for Instagram. Um, Twitter uh, is, is another platform. I think that um, it's, it's, it, it is actually rather challenging, I think, to build an audience on Twitter. I think mm -hmm. that where things are going is really more toward um, the networks where people are interacting in a more one-to-one -one way, like right. Facebook. I mean, Snapchat is exploding right now. Um, I know that there are a lot of agents that are using Snapchat um, not necessarily to build their business as sort of the core function, but as a complement to all of the other channels they're using. Mm -hmm. What would you say would be better if someone had an option between an edited and there was no budget, edited video or Facebook Live? So, if, is the question if budget was no no there was there was no there was no budget there was they no could budget spend behind it. for a beautiful professional video and it was let's just say it was about growing their brand so mm -hmm. it's about them and not one of their properties or listings. So I look, I mean, I look at it in a couple of different ways, but I think that there, a combination of different types of video mm -hmm. is important. I think that that beautifully shot and edited what I would call more of an anthem video, mm -hmm. which is really about drumming up interest in who someone is as a person, as a, as a professional. Um, that's really a way to put your best foot forward. And that's the kind of thing you invest in once and has a shelf life of six months, a year or longer. Um, that really is sort of your your story, right? Mm -hmm. And then interspersing that with shorter Facebook Live, Instagram, selfie shot. Um, you know, there, there are so many different ways to capture video quickly and edit it on the fly. Right. But I think investing a little bit of money up front in sort of that anthemic, here's who I am, here's what I do, here's the success I've had, here are people who are happy with me and um, think good things of me because of the the... The joy I've brought to their lives through helping them find a home or sell a home. I mean, I think that that there is a function for that sort of professionally shot video. Mm -hmm. I think you can go over the top though. Also, right? You don't you don't need to be shot on a you know on a on a sixty five foot speedboat coming into the harbor to to, <laughs> to show that you're a luxury realtor, right? I mean, I think that people but that can, might get attention. That might get attention. Absolutely. It also might get. Um, the trolls going and, right. and, and get people um, more interested in criticizing you than complimenting you. Right. What about hashtags? Are there any specific hashtags that you feel um, people should have when posting real estate videos or should they just keep it a little more natural? How do they even find out what hashtags to use? Yeah, I mean, I, I think hashtags are overused. I think hashtags um, in social media can be used for a handful of different purposes. The first is just to create short, crisp encapsulations of what you just wrote in four sentences. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that they can be used as an extension of search marketing. So that if you know, for instance, that you're an expert in um, uh, the arts, uh, arts district real estate in, in, in downtown Miami, um, putting arts district, hashtag arts district homes in a post that, that, that you put up might actually give you attention from someone who's on Google searching for it or on Twitter or Instagram searching for arts district homes. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, it, does, it can have a function. I think you, people can get overly attached to hashtags where their actual post. everything. Yeah, their like post. their actual <laughs> post is a sentence long and then they have 30 hashtags following and it's like, right. it doesn't do much. 
What about timing of videos? I know that there's an art to having a certain segmented amount of time for a video because people's attention kind of fades off after a certain time. So yeah. what do you think, whether it's about a property or about the agent themselves, what's the, the perfect time to have for a video? Um, you know, I think any, anywhere from, from 10 to 30 seconds is probably the ideal length of time. Mm -hmm. I also think the platform helps you make that determination. Shorter is better on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, you can probably get away with 30 seconds, 45 seconds on Facebook. If you launch that bit of video content with something eye-catching that's going to make someone stop in their feed and actually want to click to hear more. I think it's also really important to think about, and, and this is something that has really come about in the last year primarily, is captioning your videos. Mm -hmm. Because people are more apt to watch something that they like because they think it's visually appealing, but if they don't actually click on it in Facebook, there's no sound. Mm -hmm. And so being able to illustrate what you're talking about, what you're saying, uh, using captions through the video is actually a really uh, important thing to consider. Mm -hmm. When creating videos, you know, you obviously, prior to using Elizabeth Banks, were your videos, was there a high engagement there? Were they as popular? And how yeah. did you follow the trend to say, hey, I'm gonna use her? And how could somebody who can't reach out to her figure out where to find the trends? Yeah, you know, I think that one of the things that was very important for us at Realtor.com when we started advertising to consumers was really this understanding that we had something that was very differentiated about our product. Um, it was the quality of our listings mm -hmm. and the fact that our listings uh, were comprehensive around the United States. Our relationship to the MLS community meant that we served up more than 97, 98% of the for sale listings in the United States. Um, and we updated those listings every 15 minutes and our competitors couldn't match that. Mm -hmm. And so that was our point of differentiation. And then the differentiation and how we told the story was using humor to tell that story. Mm -hmm. So our first campaign was called Find It First, mm -hmm. um, where it was sort of a little bit like a dream where multiple people appeared in the same bathroom or kitchen or living room at the same time. And they're like, what are these other people doing here? And it was this idea that if you don't use Realtor.com, you're not going to find the home of your dreams before someone else does. <laughs> The next campaign was called Accuracy Matters, and it really hit a more powerful, rational message uh, on the head and said that if accuracy doesn't matter to you, you can go use our competitors, but if accuracy does matter, Realtor.com is the only place where you're gonna find the most accurate set of home listings. Right, I remember that one. And so that fed into you know wanting to work with Elizabeth, and, and a lot of it had to do with the success we had seen from our former campaigns mm -hmm. and the desire to sort of, uh, in spinal tap parlance, uh, turn it up to 11. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that we wanted to work with a celebrity for the campaign. Um, we really did a lot of do due diligence and identified a range of different actors and actresses. Um, we didn't want someone who was too well known right. because we didn't want them to bring the baggage of an, a character they had played previously. But we wanted someone who was definitely a success. And, and more than that, someone who understood digital media as well, because right. digital has become such a huge component of our campaigns. Um, and Elizabeth had this longstanding reputation as not only a fantastic comedic actress, but also um, a digital pioneer. And she was doing sort of this on again, off again digital talk show mm -hmm. um, that she would post on YouTube and on her blog. And, and um, we really liked that. And, and we started working with her. And you know what's remarkable is that this year she just launched her own digital con comedy content site focused on uh, female comedians called Hoo Ha Ha. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're really excited for her and all the, all the great stuff she's doing with that. Um, we continue to be excited working with her. Awesome. How often should someone post? So we talked about that, you know, 30 second video, but should they be doing that if they really want to grow their brand through video? Should they be posting every day? Should they be posting once a week? Is there any science behind that to really gain that momentum and gain that following? Yeah, I think that the, I think that the, the, the science behind it is consistency. Mm -hmm. um, I think daily is probably more than necessary. Right. Um, if you have something to say and you have an audience who wants to hear it, once a week is certainly fine. You know, some of YouTube's biggest influencers, the folks that have tens of millions of followers and mm -hmm. subscribers, um, who brands pay a lot of money to get their, their brands featured on, um, you know, some of them post once a month. 
Some of them post once every two weeks. Some of them post daily. Mm -hmm. really depends on sort of who you're trying to reach and how big an audience you already have. You Mm -hmm. don't want to overwhelm people. Right. Um, You want people to come to you rather than you sort of um, pushing your video down their throat. So it's kind of more of trial and error and figuring out yeah. where your audience is, who it is. And yeah, and I think that I think that a really strong indicator of that is how people interact with that content, mm-hmm. how many likes you get, how many comments you get, how many shares you get, and understanding what increasing or decreasing the frequency can do to the engagement for each of those pieces of content. Mm -hmm. Is there any specific time? I mean, I know, you know, when I look at Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, there's, you know, you do it in the morning and then during lunchtime, then in the afternoon and then at night. But with video, is that different at all as far as when you should put out a video? You know, I think that Facebook specifically has changed their algorithm so much over the last couple of years that content that is starting to become more popular within your network is going to become more visible to more of your network. Mm -hmm. So I think time of day, you don't want to post something at 3 o'clock in the morning. Right. Um, But as people are getting to work, getting stuff in front of them, when they first get in, they're having their coffee, they're not ready to really start working yet. Um, Lunchtime, absolutely. Early evening and then then sort of right before bed. Right. Um, You know, not at 11.30 at night, but maybe like 9 o'clock. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being a part of today's show. Yeah, Andrew. happy to be. Yeah. Make sure to log into Realtor.com to see all of the videos. You can follow Andrew on Twitter, Facebook. What else do we have you on? Twitter's great. Twitter. And it's <laughs> at Strickman? At Strickman. At Strickman. He's got a good handle there. So check him out. Make sure to follow him. And make sure to log in to SamSpeaks.com and download the Sam Speaks radio podcast on iTunes for weekly shows and tips, trends, and technology.